This is Chemical Processes for Micro and Nano Fabrication. I'm Chris Mack, your professor for this class. This is Lecture 63, part one of a two-part series of lectures on nano imprint lithography. Now, nano imprint, while an impressing, impressive sounding name, has in fact been around for centuries. Maybe not in the nano side, but if we don't worry about printing nanometer scale patterns, then imprint lithography is nothing more than embossing. Embossing has been around for centuries. It's a process that uses a, a relief pattern on a template, which is then pressed into a material that's soft enough to allow that pressing, and it creates uh, a copy of the relief pattern uh, in the template. Uh, we use it for paper, for leather, um, plastics, um, lots of applications for embossing. In the high-tech world, we've used embossing as a way of manufacturing small patterns for quite a while since the, day, the early days of CD manufacturing. When is that? The 1980s when we began uh, CD manufacturing? Early 80s? Uh, this is also an embossing process. The original CDs had feature sizes that were less than one micron, uh, and we record as pits into a plastic material um, that when we shine a laser on we get different reflectivities and uh, that allows us to record information in the size of these pits. Uh, DVDs have smaller pits in these grooves and Blu-rays even smaller still. Using lower wavelength light we can read off these smaller patterns. But the manufacturing of these discs involves creating a master template with an optical lithography process, followed by uh, an embossing process, an imprint, a thermal imprint. And this is extremely inexpensive. Uh, we don't have any alignment we have to worry about, very little alignment to worry about. Um, we're relatively tolerant of defects, and uh, it's extremely cheap. We can reproduce gigabytes of data on one of these disks for pennies. Uh, and that's the advantage of this uh, kind of imprinting process. Um, and as I was implying, some of the disadvantages will have to do with the difficulty of doing alignment and its sensitivity to defects, but we'll talk about that later. So there are many types of nano imprint lithography. Of course, when we use the word nano imprint instead of just imprint lithography, uh, it implies that we're creating nanometer scale features, things less than 100 nanometers, for example. And we can do that with this technique. Uh, the types of nano imprint lithography uh, approaches are thermal imprint, uh, step and flash or jet and flash imprint, roll to roll, and then uh, some other soft lithography techniques as well, which we'll briefly mention. Some of the advantages, as I've already explained, it's relatively inexpensive, making uh, Four gigabytes of DVD data, for example, uh, only cost a penny or two, uh, a few pennies um, per imprint because um, uh, the, this reproduction technique is so inexpensive. It's very easy to get high resolution. It takes very little work to press down below 100 nanometers. To get down to 10 nanometers takes quite a bit of work, but uh, um, we, relatively speaking, it's easy to get some high resolution patterns and it's inherently mass producible. We can fairly quickly print large areas and as a result this is a viable manufacturing technique. Now there are significant disadvantages of imprint lithography for certain applications but we'll save those disadvantages for our next lecture on this topic. Let's go through some of the methods of imprint lithography. Uh, the method that got the earliest attention, uh, promoted and developed a lot by Stephen Chow at Princeton, is thermal imprint lithography. It's relatively simple. We begin by making a mask that is often a quartz substrate, a mask like the photo mask we use in, in optical lithography, but with a template uh, relief pattern. Um, here I show just lines and spaces. Then we have a substrate and we put on it some kind of a plastic material, a polymer, that is soft when heated. So we heat it up to make this polymer soft. 
then we press down to, to push our pattern into this soft material. So this is one of the reasons why we call this a soft lithography, uh, because we're using these soft materials to do our imprint. The, the various uh, variables of interest are the pressure and the temperature, uh, well, as well, of course, as the material being used. We remove the mask, which can be a difficult thing. You can imagine one of the problems would be this polymer material sticking to the photo mask, so we often use release layers, uh, well-designed materials to ensure that there's no sticking. And when we're done, we can transfer that pattern with an etching step into a harder substrate. And this is relatively high resolution. Here we show some uh, uh, 10 nanometer holes being uh, printed with, with this thermal imprint process. Another approach developed by Grant Wilson and, and S.V. Srinivasan at the University of Texas at Austin is step and flash lithography. Uh, this at, at first looks the same. We have a template here uh, with the relief pattern made into it. It's generally a, a transparent material, the same uh, few silica used for making photo masks and optical lithography. It's got a, uh, a release layer coated onto it so that it won't stick to our implant, implant resist. Uh, then on the substrate we put a liquid implant material, or uh, implant, imprint <laughs> material, a liquid resist. Um, the idea here is if we have a pure liquid, we can push down the template into that liquid. It will fill up all of the holes relatively easily. We don't have to use a lot of pressure. And it can be done at room temperature because we don't have to make it soft. It's already a liquid. So it fills in these holes in the template. But it's still a liquid, so we haven't made a, a, a pattern yet until we expose with UV light. So we do a blanket UV light. It goes through the template and it crosslinks, polymerizes the liquid material, turns it into a solid. Now we pull it off and we've got a solid replica uh, of that template in our polymer which we can transfer to the substrate using an etching process. So in many respects similar to the thermal input process uh, and it also has the possibility of very dense features. Here I show some 30, 20 nanometer features, but uh, since then uh, this approach has demonstrated 10 nanometer resolution. Now the step and flash approach has some advantages over the thermal imprint uh, for some applications. In particular, uh, it's room temperature. If we heat up the substrate and the photo mask, they will have different uh, coefficients of thermal expansion. They'll expand differently depending on the temperature. Uh, we'll get um, difficult alignment issues. If we're trying to print something that doesn't require alignment, obviously this is not an issue. But if we're trying to align this pattern with previous patterns on the substrate, then uh, this, this thermal expansion um, makes it virtually impossible to get good matching good overlay. Um, step and flash is at room temperature which makes it much easier. It's faster because we don't have to push. Um, in general it's faster because we don't have to push no significant pressure is required, UV exposure is very quick, so we can get fairly quick um, uh, throughput, high throughput from this process. Uh, the, the main time is the time to dispense the drops and the, the time to actually allow the liquid to fill up into the holes. We can get a much longer lifetime of our templates because we're not pushing hard uh, and, and that results, pushing hard results in defects. One variation of this jet and flash approach is to use an inkjet head to dispense the liquid. The idea here is you want to have just the right amount of liquid to fill the holes and not too much. Otherwise it takes too long for that excess liquid to squeeze out the ends of your template. And since the pattern density can vary across the template, by using an inkjet printer 
to put drops of liquid just where you need it, you get the right amount of liquid in the right place and it speeds up how, how quickly you can push down and, and fill up uh, the te template with liquid. And this is the uh, approach that people are considering for semiconductor manufacturing. We'll talk more about that in the next lecture as well. Another interesting application is roll-to-roll -roll imprint. This is meant to be extraordinarily fast. We have a very large roll. It can be quite wide, uh, even a meter wide in some applications. And we're continuously streaming this material across uh, some kind of a template. Uh, we'll generally want to print uh, very regular patterns. We can use this to make polarizers, for example. People are talking about using roll-to-roll -roll imprint to make the polarizers that go on big screen TVs. Um, the idea is to make patterns that are very small. Here we show 50 nanometer patterns made with this approach, but very inexpensive. Um, we're less tolerant to, to uh, have more tolerance to defects, for example, in some of these applications, and we don't worry about overlay, then we can use uh, roll to roll. This is still under development. It's not in widespread use today, but I think it will be for many applications in the future. There are other soft lithography techniques that people use, and a very popular approach is to use a PDMS stamp. PDMS is polydimethylsiloxane, and it's a soft, rubbery kind of material. We make the stamp by first making a relief pattern on a silicon wafer, using uh, conventional lithography, for example. Then we will coat with PDMS and solidify the PDMS material and pull it off, and we have a stamp that's a replica of the pattern we made on the wafer. Then we can use that stamp uh, in a very easy and simple way to transfer patterns onto substrates. One way is uh, to ink the PDMS stamp and then with the material that we want to transfer and then simply press it down and transfer that ink onto the substrate. So here on the tops of the substrate of uh, the PDMS stamp a relief pattern, the inks are transferred. We can do the opposite. We can fill up the holes in the PDMS stamp and then transfer that cured polymer um, to the substrate. This is a little bit similar to step and flash. Um, we can also uh, use this stamp as a mask for uh, contact printing. Uh, there's lots of applications. The main idea here is that we have a soft reticle, a soft mask, this PDMS stamp material, uh, which because it's soft and flexible, it's easy to apply in, in many applications. So, uh, we've gone through a very brief introduction into what is a very rich field of uh, study, imprint lithography, with lots and lots and lots of variations that I haven't even begun to cover. Let's look at what we've learned so far. You should be able to quickly and easily answer all of these questions. What is soft lithography? Name three types of nano imprint lithography. What are the advantages of imprint lithography? We haven't really talked about the disadvantages yet, but we will next time. And finally, what are the main advantages of the step and flash approach over the thermal input approach for certain applications? Well, next time we'll continue our discussion of imprint lithography and talk about some of the applications and commercial tools used. Till then.